Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. In this video, we are going to set up an environment for experimenting, testing, and learning SIP. The industry term for this environment is a SIP test bed or just a test bed. This is not going to be the cheapest test bed, but the test bed we will build is the best environment for SIP testing. I know because I used a similar setup at Verizon for testing VoIP PBX systems. The list of equipment used in this video and a link to our drawing will be below in this video's description. So with that being said, let's get started. To experiment with SIP, we need a test bed. So what do we need in our test bed? Well, first we need at least two SIP phones. I'm going to use a couple of Grandstream GXP2000 SIP phones I have lying around the lab. The GXP2000 phones are no longer in production, but these are great test phones. You can buy them on eBay for about 25 to 30 bucks delivered. I've plugged the phones in and they are all booted up. The next item we need is an ethernet cable connecting both phones. The Grandstream phones have two ethernet ports on the back that act like a little two port ethernet switch. I'm going to use the LAN ports to connect the phones together. Both phones have previously been provisioned and both have static IP addresses. Now that the ethernet ports are up, we see the IP addresses on the bottom of the LCD on the phones. The Grandstream phones support direct VoIP calling without having to register with a SIP call agent. So, let's make a call. To make a direct VoIP call, all you do is plug in the IP address of the phone you're trying to call. Yep, the call works. Well, it's great the call works, but we can't see the SIP messages and we can't access the GUIs on the phones. We need to put an ethernet switch in the middle that supports port mirroring and for connectivity to our network. I'm using a SMC GS8P smart ethernet switch. The GS8P is a great little switch but <laughs> it has also been discontinued by the manufacturer. Luckily, we can still find them on eBay for about 80 bucks delivered. I'm installing an ethernet cable to our wireless router that my laptop uses so we can access the GUI on the SMC switch and the GUIs on our SIP phones. Our updated drawing now shows the new connection from our ethernet switch to our router and the Wi-Fi connection to my laptop. I also added the IP address of the ethernet switch to the drawing. To capture the SIP traces from the ethernet switch, I'm connecting an ethernet cable from my laptop to the ethernet switch. I'm using a Sabrent USB to ethernet adapter that's plugged into my laptop to give it an extra ethernet port. At this point, I'm done with the physical cabling of our new SIP test bed. I've updated our drawing to show which ports on the ethernet switch are connected to phone GS1, phone GS2, the router uplink, and my laptop. I'm logging into the ethernet switch and selecting ports and port mirroring. I decide to mirror port 1 and set the port mirror to drop down to number 7. Now I'm pulling up Wireshark and selecting local area connection 3 to capture the SIP traffic from our mirrored port. I see a bunch of broadcast junk we don't really want to see in our SIP trace. So I add SIP to our display filter in Wireshark to clean it up. Okay, we're all set. 
So let's make a call. Great, we captured our first call trace. Let's go to Telephony, VoIP Calls, select our call, and click on Flow Sequence. Ah, very nice. Okay, so let's try another call that's a little more complex. I'm placing our standard call to GS2, and checking that we have two-way com. Now that the call is established, I'm putting GS2 on hold. I verify that the phone is on hold, then select line one on GS1 to take the call off a of hold. I verify two-way path has been re-established, then disconnect the call. Now we have a Wireshark trace that is a little more complex than the basic two-way call we made earlier. Since this video is about building a testbed and not analyzing SIP messages, uh, we're only going to take a quick look at this call trace. First, let's take a look at the call flow. I select Telephony, VoIP Calls, select our call, and then click on the flow sequence. The left side is GS1 and the right side is GS2. We can see the initial call and pass setup between the two phones. The call setup, which is a SIP signaling, starts at the top invite with SDP and establishes at the first AC. The two RTP streams following the AC are established with the SDP messages in the initial invite with SDP and the 200 OK with SDP. The second invite with SDP is GS1 putting the call onto hold. When a SIP phone puts a call on hold, it usually, in quote marks, um, sends an SDP message to the other end, notifying him that he's turning off his RTP receiver. In other words, he is only going to. In other words, he is only going to send only. Okay. Then the other end responds with a 200 OK with SDP, notifying the originator that he is turning off his RTP transmitter and is only going to receive only. All right. Okay, so when GS1 takes the call off a of hold, it sends another invite with SDP, notifying GS2 that he is going back into send receive mode. And GS2 responds with a 200 OK with SDP, notifying GS1 that he too is going back into send receive mode. And that's about it for this call. The, my, the buy message is GS1 telling GS2 uh, he went on hook, and GS2 is responding with a 200 OK. Since we only have two phones, we can't test conference calling, three way calling, or call transfers. If you're interested in analyzing these complex call scenarios, definitely buy a third SIP phone. However, two SIP phones are good for getting you started learning SIP. Also, don't forget to review the SIP specification RFC 3261 to make sense of the different SIP headers and fields. Believe me, there's a bunch of them. Well, that's it for this video. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. That really helps. And hit the subscribe button. That really helps too. <laughs> if you have any questions or comments, leave them under the video and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.